So we're back, back at the C Ideas booth. And uh, while I was going over all those cool uh, prototypes and projects, I happened to notice a surfboard in the corner. And uh, and Mike smiled and he said, "Yeah, well, that's a very interesting story, and it's it's the basis of a." Uh, or it's sort of a, the story of a, uh, the other company we just founded. Do you want to tell me a little bit about? Yeah, sure. Uh, the company's called Paxis. We actually uh, broke it off. It's a, it's not a subsidiary of C Ideas. It's its own company. Right. Uh, so about two years ago, one of my employees came to me and announced that he believed he had discovered and created an entirely new 3D printing technology. Uh, what's unique is it's a liquid photopolymer-based technology. And when looking at other technologies that exist currently, there's an issue with trap volume. That's where if you were to build a ping pong ball in a vat polymer polymerization process, it would fill up with liquid. If you built it in a jetted photopolymer technology, you'd have to fully encapsulate it. If you built it in a DLP technology, you'd have to worry about the part cavitating or collecting resin as it was being pulled from the tray. In this particular case, uh, Freddie Connect's design, his idea, actually translates now to a full-size surfboard that cannot be built by any commercially known system that we know of today. So it's got, it looks like it's a continuous single piece thing with, if I notice there's a hexagonal, like, you know, the normal honeycomb structure you'd see inside skis and other things. Exactly. And In fact, actually, if you look right here, right, you can see that the part is built in one piece. It's honeycomb, clean and dry and cured. This is uh, not currently available in any other liquid-based technology today. In yeah. fact, one of the other unique attributes to our, to our technology is we're able to actually embed electronics in the system. Huh. And as you can see, it's hollow and honeycomb yeah. as well. Wow, that's amazing. So I notice you don't have the machine on the floor at the moment. No, we're still in our proof of concept stage and we're, right. de we're developing partnerships with uh, potential funding partners. Can, can you tell me a little bit about the kinds of polymers it uses? Well, right now, because of the uniqueness of the system, there haven't been resins fully developed for our system. In fact, we're reaching out to material companies as we speak. Uh, when you look at this surfboard, you would think that it was that it required a lot of material in the machine at one time to build it, which is the case of that polymerization. In our particular case, we were actually able to build this entire surfboard with less than a gallon of material in the machine at any given time. Dear God. That creates a tremendous amount of scalability for us. In fact, uh, even though this is 75 inches, the machine itself can fit through a standard doorway. We have a scalability that would allow us to be able to make the parts 10, 20, 30 feet long if we wanted to. From, from a machine that fits through a doorway? Well, we probably have to make the machine a little bit bigger <laughs> for that. But this, this you printed in one, one go. Yep. Uh, and it, it's, it, it, it'll go through a standard doorway, and obviously it's, wow. Um, yeah, so one of the other unique attributes to the system is that because of uh, the way that we deploy material, we're actually gonna be able to introduce solid particulates into the material, uh, which is another first within uh, that polymerization or right. liquid-based technology. And that would be for structural? Well, imagine being able to put graphene in a material or have carbon fibers uh, acting as reinforcement. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of different areas that haven't even been addressed yet, and I think we're really excited about it because our end goal one day would be to build an entire windmill blade. Cool. Um, when when can we expect uh, the unveil? And uh, you're you're going to be in touch with PD and D before that, right? I absolutely will. I'll have Elizabeth Good reach out to you. She's part of our team. Thank you. And when do you when do you expect to be? Uh... Uh, we're not entirely sure now. I mean, I, ideally, I'd like to uh, have a product to market in the next two years. But uh, you know, we're taking our time. We want to do it right. We want to partner with the right companies in order to build the product that's going to be uh, really designed for end users. Mike Littrell. Thank you so much. Uh, we're, we'll, and this is going to be coming. Keep me coming back to uh, Rapid. I'm for the looking next forward of to seeing you again next year. Thank you.